now it's late yes mama from the moment you leave this house in the morning until you come home from school you're at the mercy of this world evil like this dirt seeks you out you don't have to look for it it gets under your skin. It seeps in through the pores. But I didn't do anything to get dirty, I swear. If you look, you'll see it all around you. Those boys out there and their grimy little games. Even your father tries to bring it into this house, but I'll have none of it. He drinks, Mama. Mm -hmm. I'll have none of it, and neither will you. Whether it's drinking or wasting your life like your father has or like those boys will. A moment, any moment away from your goal is a sin. A mortal sin. Yes, Mama. And against everything I've ever taught you. Remember that. You listen to me. Do what I say. And you'll become what neither your father or his father before him, or my father could ever have dreamed of becoming. A man in charge of his life. There is order in this universe. And so long as there's order in your life, your future is unlimited. Evil can only slip in through the cracks. Discipline and order repel it. Remember that. You go to school, you study hard, you prepare yourself. You go to church because the church protects you. You choose a profession and when you find the right girl, you get married and you have your children. You trust me, don't you, Johnny? I love you, Mama. Yes, 
But you have to trust me, too. You listen to what your mother says, and you'll get in this life everything you deserve. Yes, Mama. Good or evil, those are the choices. And whenever you come across evil, you cut it out. Oh, <laughs> no, but you are the lucky one. You're a lucky boy. You've already been taught the difference. <laughs> You're my best girl. I am, Johnny. I am. Sweet dreams. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. brother will betray brother unto death, and a father his child. A moment, any moment away from your goal is a sin, a mortal sin, and against everything I've ever taught you. And children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death, and good or evil, those are the choices.
Holy, right there. What are you doing here? Uh, officer, I, I'm Pete Chico. I teach drama at the high school. You're breaking an enter in here. It was open. Listen, could you put those guns away? You got some ID? Okay, Mr. De Chico. You want to tell us what you're doing here? It's been a month. I've been keeping my eye on this place, just like you have. One by one, the lights have been going out, and that music doesn't stop. I'm telling you, I know Patty List. She's been into uh, my place. She would have called, sent me a card, something. All right. I'll let you in front. smells in here. What's with the music? Officers, over here. I even left a note telling us which cabinet the guns were in. Do you have permits? Yeah. Then we got his fingerprints. <coughs> Chief, this is Reverend Barber. Oh, uh, I called him. There's a letter here for him. this must look like to you. But I want you to know that I took special care to be sure there was no pain. Now, what can you tell me about him? Well, he and the kids came to church every Sunday. He used to teach Sunday school. OK, he goes to church. Is he a fanatic? Not exactly, no. Rigid, maybe. Very, very strict. But I don't know. Uh, I thought I knew John List. But, but this is not the man I knew. Apparently not. Mr. Seifert, this is Reverend Barber from Westfield, New Jersey. <sighs> Mr. 
Mrs. Seaford, I'm afraid I have some very, very bad news for you about your sister. What? He killed him. Hello? Who is this? chance of rain over the weekend. Temperatures in the greater Denver area today will climb into the low 40s downtown while dropping back into the 30s tonight. Local weathermen predict that this may be the mildest December in the last 10 years. Looking at national news, police in Westfield, New Jersey have discovered the bodies of two adults and three children murdered in a family's mansion located in an exclusive section of the town. All were apparently shot to death by John Emil List. We're not concerned here this morning about explaining the illogical, irrational, and bizarre behavior of a son, a father, a parishioner, and a friend. We've all been leveled, but God will lift us up. You know what's awful? Let us listen to the prophet Isaiah, who said, All mankind I can almost... is grass. They last understand no him killing than Helen. I can, I can almost the deal with that. Because the breath of the Lord <laughs> blows upon them. The kids. Let us pray. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Seaford, I know this is difficult. But aside from what happened on the 9th, I have no, no real history on this man. Can you tell me anything about him? What kind of a man was he? He could be kind and gentle. But I was worried about him because he sometimes seemed so tortured. He was an angry man. Did you ever witness any physical violence between them? Not physical violence. Did they love each other? Maybe that was the, the problem. Maybe he knew it. Knew what, Mrs. Seaford? He was a consolation prize. Helen's first husband had died just six months before John proposed to her. <laughs> I knew him as long as I knew Marvin. Marvin was a different kind of guy. And there'll never be another one like him, not in my life. You don't know that. Helen! I know you. I know the kind of man that you're attracted to. John Liss. Safe. I want to be safe. I'll never love anyone like I loved Marvin, and I don't want to. If I had a love like that and lost it again, it would kill me. John loves me. He wants to take care of me. At least let me have that much. Johnny's favorite, scalloped potatoes and sausages. Oh, thank you, Mama. <laughs> oh, Johnny, I think I'd like to hear Helen say grace. You do say grace at your table, my dear, don't you? 
You and your first husband, you did say, Grace. Oh, uh, Mama. <clears throat> Mrs. List, I'm not divorced. I'm a widow. Yes, Johnny told me. <clears throat> Dear God, help us to remember there is but one Lord and Master and that we are but your humble servants. Thank you for what we are about to receive. The recipe may not be yours, but the food is. <clears throat> Amen. Here, Johnny, let me. Alma hated everything about Helen. What she hated most, and Helen knew this, was when Helen touched her baby boy. Helen would take John's hand and squeeze it and never take her eyes off Alma. Believe me, from that night on, they each staked out their territory. God help the one who crossed over first. Chief. Found John this car parked at JFK. Reckon he split the state. Mm. Now we can call the FBI. Hey, folks, I uh, I have to go. Um, would you like to keep those? Yes, I would. Thank you. We've had over 20 calls from around the country, three from Chicago. Lookalikes, crank calls. We're in touch with Interpol, airport security from Athens to Hong Kong. We figure by this time, he's got a new identity, starting with a new social security card. Unfortunately, easy to get. Just say you lost it. Then when they replace it, you can get a driver's license, bank account, whatever. So the problem becomes where to look first. Scotland Yard Hold it. Say John List is a man of habit. <laughs> And his biggest habit is going to church, so that's where we should be looking. Now, Reverend Barber has offered to provide us with a national directory of Lutheran churches. Look, we've handled hundreds of cases like this. The way this guy exploded, the way he just wipes out everything around him, this is a guy that wants to dump his past, start over. For the first time in his life, he figures he's going to break loose. He didn't break loose. This was premeditated. He canceled the milk delivery, the newspaper. He went to the bank. He left notes. Now, he is a creature of habit. He is also an accountant, and he needs to make a living. So let's get his picture to the major firms across the country. You've got to be practical. We can't be everywhere. In order to do the job right on his kids, he had to reload more than once. And then he sat down to eat dinner. So, let's at least get his picture out to the Lutheran churches. You're dealing with the FBI now, Mr. Richland. I don't think we need to involve the church. Thanks for stopping by. You, you advertise for a cook. I'd like to apply for the job, sir. Look, man, you picked a hell of a time to apply for a job, okay? I got three people out sick and the rest are idiots. Sorry. What experience you got? Well, I, I, I've cooked. Yes, I have cooked. Well, you take cook. these out yes. to the buffet, okay? Absolutely. Great. Thank uh, you. What's your name? Clark. Robert P. Clark. Bob, okay. Ramon, will you get Bob a jacket, please, and wash your hands, all right? Yes, I will. Absolutely. Kathy, you get Lombards on the phone yet? Robert P. Clark. I'm Robert P. Clark. I'm Robert P. Clark. He's going to get away with it. It's been a year, you guys have nothing, and you don't expect that to change. You got any new leads, Chief? I don't have the whole U.S. government behind me, do I? Look, we've checked out over 100 leads. 
folks claiming they've seen John List at their supermarkets, at the post office, at the shopping malls. Some of them claim he's been sitting in the next pew at church. Now, there's a familiar theory. We make mistakes sometimes. The fact is, the church no longer wants to be involved. Maybe we'll get lucky. I'll keep you posted. I'll wait by the phone. I do the best I can. But if I've learned anything, it's that I shouldn't take it so personally. You ought to try that. I do take it personally. I take John List personally. And if you guys can't bring him in, I will. What's going on? They are reckoning, Chief. Don't complain, you knew it was coming for months. They say it's gonna make our lives easier. What are these? <sighs> Dead files. Okay, here's the deal. No file is dead until I say so, okay? Get me Henry Carlson at Xerox, please. No one ever contacted you. I guess they just didn't think it was important. But you do remember him. Oh, yes, I remember him. It's hard to forget a man that intense. Did you socialize with them? Not really. Company picnics, Christmas parties. It's the wife I remember. In those days, wives were considered a reflection of their husbands. Drink up, John, uh, and congratulations. No, thank you, sir. I, I don't drink. I frankly, I see no value in it. Excuse me. Well, we finished reviewing those new billing procedures that you proposed. Well, most of that was in place, sir. The company had already done the work. Give yourself some credit. You came up with some very good ideas. Oh, John List thank does you. not take credit for someone else's suggestions. <laughs> Your husband's doing a very fine job here. I think you should be proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I really hate? I hate it when uh, men put pins in their Helen, pocket like that, because it always leaves ink stains, you know? No, you should have met my first husband, Helen, Marvin. We don't have he never had, had a, a I don't know, ink yes, stain on him. Maybe we'll get a little fresh air, honey. We'll come I, back I, in a Come back. Now, just walk out, please, Helen. Now, stop that. Wife beater. Wife beater. He's a wife beater. What's wrong with you? Give me this purse. It's not alcohol, is it? Oh, no. It no. Look at this. Look at this, Helen. What it is. The doctor gives them to me for my headaches, for my nerves. Honey, you got three different kind of pills here. You don't know the kind of pain I'm in. You can't do this. What do you do when you go to a, a, a doctor and, and, and you hoard them? You tell them what? You tell them you lost them? Look at what you're doing, Helen. You have all kinds of pills. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Okay. 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 
John, I'm pregnant. I'm scared, John. No, that's okay. I gave you your children. I don't want to go through this again. I've had two, and I've lost two. Now, that was God's will. To hell with God. Helen, stop this. Oh, hey, did you hear what I said? I said, to hell with Helen, God. Helen, stop this. Now, let's get with God. Mrs. List called me the next day. And she was like a, a mother crying about her son or something. It was, it was very bizarre. You think she was drunk? I don't know. She certainly wasn't rational. I can tell you that much. This was a wonderful idea of yours, getting away for a couple of weeks. I guess you were right. I was feeling guilty about hey, taking hey, a holiday. Hey, 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 We're on vacation. Let's enjoy ourselves. Thinking about Chief Richmond. How kind he's been to us. Calling every month. He wants so badly to have good news for us. Not everyone would have done that. Every time the phone rings, I think maybe he's finally caught John. Now, the reason they haven't caught John yet is because he's so unpredictable. Look when he bought that house. Here's an accountant who's making $20,000 a year, he's going from job to job, and he goes out and buys a mansion. That was not John, that was Helen. That house was her dream. It's ballroom. <laughs> it's our own ballroom. We could have formal balls. New Year's Eve, Christmas. Come on, you never play, you never dance. Helen, we don't need a ballroom. <laughs> And we certainly don't need the added expense of a mansion. Come on, come on, come on. I'll even leave. <laughs> You're the vice president of the bank now. Yeah. Ellen, I make the same salary I made eight years ago at Xerox. It's not enough to support this house. We can't do it. We're middle class. I want this house. It's, it's a fantasy. I've given you your children. I've stood by you as you've gone from job to job. I've watched all the other couples move away and move up while we've stayed crammed in that little teeny house for 10 years. Huh? This is the best house in Westfield, John. We could never, ever find another place like this at this price. Huh? Huh? Come on. For once in your life, take a risk. Huh? Oh, it has a beautiful apartment up on the third floor, Mama. And there's a, a, a nice big private kitchen there for you and a lovely big bedroom. I don't think so. Mama, I, I can't afford it by myself. But with your $10,000, I can make the down payment. And then in, 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 instead of you wasting your money on, on, on rent, why, you would be building, we would be building equity together, Mama. And if you gave me the power of attorney, why, I would take care of all of your investments and all of your expenses and your bills and, uh, uh please, Mama, help me. I need you, Mama. We'll be together, Johnny. We'll be together always. Thank you. I found 
found her honeymoon pillow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, remember? Yes. Um, I'm so happy, John. Honey? I'm so proud of you. Um, I just knew you could do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mama loaned us $10,000 for the down payment. Well, if uh, I, I, to... I told her about the apartment up on the third floor with her own you can... kitchen. You wait don't... a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You did what, honey? She has to live with us. I'm sorry. It's the only way I could afford it, honey. I'm sorry. There goes my only chance to be happy in this house. And then she calls me, ranting and raving about Alma, like a child who can't have things her own way. He went out of his way to give her everything she wanted. And then it wasn't good enough. That was his frustration, you know. He was raised to think that there was a right way and a wrong way. And if you did it right, somehow you got rewarded. With Helen, he could never get it right. Gene, what would you do if you ever saw him again? I mean, if they ever do catch him. I don't know if I'd... If I'd want to kill him or start crying all over again. I'd kill him. I told him he had to choose between her and me. And then I got a divorce later that year. Sorry. Oh. Are you married? No. My wife died several years ago from cancer. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I often regret not having the, the comfort of children. Oh, I know. It gets lonely sometimes, doesn't it? Yes, it does. However, if you're at peace with God, then you're never really alone. Well, that's true, of course. That's what's wrong with the world. They say that God is dead, but it's man's spirit that is dying. We live in a permissive society and it's destroying man's soul. Trees may bend with the wind, but man has a soul, and he must not bend against the winds of evil. I was taught one simple rule, that if you stand tall and you cut out evil at its heart, then only goodness will follow you all the days of your life. Well, I believe that. Yeah. God did not intend for uh, man to live alone. The spirit must be shared or it dies. Do you believe that? Yes. You do? There we go. Oh, oh. whoa! <laughs> so, they made you chief accountant yet or what? No, no, no. I've only been there for a month. Well, if they don't, you tell me. I'll have you back here in a second. You know, the kitchen's in chaos again. <laughs> no, not a chance. They love him there. I told Bob 
As soon as he gets his raise, we're gonna go look for a house. A house already? Hey, Bob, when you make your move, you really move, huh? They have this policy there of no raises for the first six months. But I told Bob I want him marching in there after three months and demanding a raise. I'm not gonna demand. We're, we're gonna live in her place together. Just Bob fine. Clark, I told you, if we try to live in my place, we're gonna go start raving mad. Honey, we, we don't have any choice. Of course you have a choice. With your potential and your background and your experience, I'll make you vice president of that bank, John. You act like you're some grimy little clerk with a briefcase and a bag lunch. I'm not going in debt over a house. Men take chances, John. Men take charge. I'm doing the best I can, Helen. I'm sorry. Bob, for heaven's sake, Bob. Are you all right? What, honey? Sure. I'm all right. I just, uh, I got uh, scared, that's all. You know, all the talking about uh, houses and mortgages and... <laughs> we got married today. We should uh, celebrate. Well, uh, looks like we got ourselves a nervous groom on our hands. Come on, you're newlyweds. Just dance. No, I... I don't dance. You see, Bob? It's really not that hard. Uh, yes, I see. Mr. Kluger, I'm an accountant. I know figures as well as anyone. That's why you hired me. I, I, I wasn't trained on computers. I was trained to use my brain, not, not a machine's brain. Bob, everybody in this office has had to adapt. Yes, they're younger. Are you telling me you're too old? No, sir. Just that it'll take me a little longer, that's all. Don't let it take too long. Yes, sir. I do everything exactly right, right straight down the line. I am entitled to advancement. That's not what we're looking for. Not on our executives. We look for flexibility, creativity. Uh, excuse me, sir. I, I, I find that such things as, as flexibility and, and creativity lead to only one thing, and, and that's confusion. John, management takes certain skills. Excuse me again, sir. I learned one simple rule. You set your goal. You do the work required to arrive at that goal, and then... I don't know who your teacher was, John, but I can tell you this. Working with figures takes one kind of talent. Working with people takes another. Listening to them, being sensitive to their problems. 
Those are the talents we look for in our managers and, and vice presidents. What if I told you that I was no longer prepared to stay under the circumstances while others are being promoted beyond me? Well, then I would have to tell you to look for another job. Is that your final word on the subject? We'd be very sorry to see you go. Chocolate, just like Freddie wanted. Yes, Mom, it's very pretty. We'll, we'll be right down. She baked him a cake, didn't she? Yes, she did, honey. Well, I said I'd do it. When? His, his birthday is today. I've got a migraine. I need some more water for my pills. You take too many no, pills. No, I don't take enough. The headaches got worse, you know. It's like there's not enough pills in the world to stop it. You go to a doctor, and he gives you a prescription. Then you go to another doctor, and he gives you another prescription, and another doctor, and another prescription. You're not taking any more pills. You're not taking Give me those damn pills. pills. Give me those don't damn swear. pills. I said don't swear. Oh. What's gonna happen if I swear, John? Is God gonna punish us? I don't know. I never try to predict what God's gonna do. Of course you don't. You're too busy playing God. Fine. Fine. John, when you go to church this Sunday, I want you to take my name off the membership rolls. What? You children, stop the noise down there! Well, what did you say? I don't care if you take the kids, you take my name off. Uh, Helen, the church is the center of our lives. It's our preparation <laughs> against the evils of this world. <laughs> what evil, John? Where is it? I don't see it. <laughs> You use the church like a shield against this imaginary evil. I don't want any more of it. You take my name off those membership rolls. I was really hoping I would. Yeah, I did. Very good. I told each and every one of you this house is not a playground. Don't you listen to me anymore? This house is a sanctuary. It's a... Well, anyway. Off the phone when I'm talking to you. Get off of the phone. Johnny. This house is a, a God-given sanctuary. You kids, you... You all want things. You and your mother, your grandmother. You all have what you want, don't you? Well, don't you? Johnny. Johnny. done what I was told to do always, but evil still surrounds me. It lives in the very heart of this house, and nothing I say, nothing I do kills it. I've done what she told me to do, and I'm losing everything. She lied to me, and I'm losing everything.
Chief, I think you ought to know. People are saying that John List's come back. Maybe he set this fire. Since we never found him, people in the town consider this entire case a mystery. Fire's just another part of it. The only mystery here, Dana, is the whereabouts of John List. John List is gone. Now the house is gone. Bob, it's over. Not yet. He says he quit, but I know he was fired. He's been investing all our savings in some coupon business, and that's going under, so... All the money is going out. There's nothing coming in. Yeah, I just thought things were going to get a little easier. He's a good man, Eleanor. I've never seen a man dote on a woman like he does you. Well, he opens the car door for me and he brings me flowers. And he's the most polite man I've ever met. And he's very, very gentle. Do you love him? Of course. So... Not like my first husband. Honey, your first husband left you. If I were you, I'd sacrifice excitement and passion for a little genteel security. Well, that's just it. I mean, there isn't any security. At least my first husband could hold down a job. Men take chances, John. Men take charge. I'm telling you, if Bob doesn't get work soon, I'm going to leave him. Hi, is my grandma here? Jennifer, honey. Where's your mother? Oh, she's getting the groceries from the trunk. I just thought I'd come over and tell you that we're back. Mm. Mm. Want a cookie? Oh, sure, I'd love you. Your daughter of mine is going to make a fool out of this family. It was just a play date. I said good people left me. Mom said I could. Mom, your mother has left the church. She is not the one you turn to for advice. <laughs> Theater is the devil's playground. Oh. I was just having fun. That's not a sin. No matter what you and Grandma say, it's not a sin. Trisha! She's lost to you, Johnny. You must turn your attention to the boys now. Young lady, where do you think you're going dressed like that? <laughs> Don't you know we pay for our sins in this world? One way or the other, we pay for our sins. I'll, I'll be back at the house, Grandma. All right, then. name are you doing? I'm so sorry. He's just under a lot of pressure.
go back to bed. Alma, John List is your son. Whatever he is, he learned it from you. He worships you first and then some god only the two of you seem to understand. I've learned to live with that, but when it comes to my children... Your children? John has raised those children. He feeds them, dresses them, puts them to bed, gets them up in the morning. He drives them to school, brings them back from school. He's brought some order into their lives. All you've brought is sickness and profanity. You have everything you need on the third floor. Don't you ever let me see you downstairs again. And if you touch one of my children, I'll see you in hell. Come on. You know where Germany is, don't you, Freddy? Well, we'll be stationed in Frankfurt, Germany, for a couple of years. You went through Frankfurt during the war, didn't you, John? Uh, yes. After it was liberated, yeah. You know, Johnny served on both fronts, in Europe and in the Pacific? Yeah. Dad got a medal for capturing six of the enemy's tanks. I should be with my family. No matter what they tell you, I am not an alcoholic. I take pills sometimes because I need them. Because nothing stops the pain. God's sake. <laughs> take care of your kids, John. Well, I don't care how many doctors she's seen. You've got to keep on taking them until one of them finds out what the hell is going on. Yes, there is, Mama. Yes, there is. The doctor, he said that that Helen's brain is is shrinking. It's dying. If if she'd have been treated from the beginning. Treated for what? Syphilis, Mama. Syphilis. They they traced it back to to 1950 when 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 she. Went to visit Marvin in Japan. Her, her first husband. And you, she gave it to you. No, 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 Mama. Uh, it stopped being communicable, but she didn't know, Mama. She never knew. She never knew. <laughs> she never knew. No. But see, that's how come all the pills and the miscarriages and everything. see this, you're not going to believe it. What? Am I out of my mind, or does that look like Bob? Yeah, that looks like Bob. John List. He killed his entire family, his wife, his kids, his mother. Bob's an accountant. This John List was an accountant. This is not Bob. Bob's wife died of cancer. Eleanor, show it to him anyway. Wanda.
makes no sense. This move is so fast, too fast, if you ask me. Eleanor, you can't even sell this place. You're going to go down there with no money? What do you want me to do? He got a job. And we can both work in Richmond. There's nothing for us here. I'm married to the man. I'm going to make the best of it. You never showed him that article, did you? <laughs> of course not. If there's some physical resemblance to this person in the paper, fine. <laughs> but it ends there. Whatever you say. Call me sometime, yes, will you please? please? I'm gonna miss you. I know. Chief Richland, I'm Michael Linder, executive producer of America's Most Wanted. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I hardly ever get to meet you guys in person. Most of our police contact is by phone. Well, oh, come on. Your visit is exactly what I hoped our program would bring about. A very close relationship between our show and law enforcement. It's one of our directors, Bobby. Hey. This is Chief Richland. I still remember the smell in that house. And I still break out in a sweat when I think that he slaughtered these people and just walked away. It's a terrible crime, Mr. Richland, and I'd really like to help, but you're up against tremendous odds. Who knows what he looks like now? We don't even know if he's still alive. He's alive. John List is alive. I think he's an accountant someplace. I think he's still going to church. He may even be remarried with a family. And if I'm right and he hasn't killed again yet, it's just a matter of time before he does. Mr. Lender, you could stop him. I can't turn this report into Mr. Layford. You've made several mistakes on the accounts yeah. receivable. Do you think I should go in and ask for a raise? I've been passed over twice, you know. Chris got a raise, shouldn't I? He could get another job easy. He's a young man. He could walk out of here today and have another job tomorrow. I'm not like that. I've never been like that. Bob, nobody said you were getting fired. They foreclosed. What are you talking about? The place in Denver, we couldn't make the payments. We couldn't sell it. So the bank foreclosed. And Eleanor blames me for everything. See, the truth is, I'm the one that has to hold everything together. I've had to fight for everything. Yet I'm the first one they blame when something goes wrong. Bob, nobody said anything's gone wrong. Nobody's getting fired. I'm sure Eleanor... You don't know what it's like when everything depends on you. When you can't make one mistake. She is unclean. And so are you. I know, Mama. What do I do? Nothing. If you had listened to me, if you trusted me, if you believed in me, but you didn't, I could have spared you. But know that I am with you. Whatever you have to go through, know that I am always with you.
Father. Father, you're right. Yes. I'm all right. How do you stand that guy? <sighs> you should take lessons from him. What? Bob Clark is the kindest, sweetest, most concerned man that I've ever met. That's what I told my husband. There are more husbands like Bob. There'd be fewer divorces. There'd <laughs> be fewer marriages. Good evening from Washington, D.C. It's Sunday, May 21st, and I'm John Walsh. Now tonight's first case, the oldest we've ever pursued on America's Most Wanted. The suspect, John List, is accused of murdering his family 17 years ago. But police and FBI agents have never stopped their search for him. Tonight, let's try to close the book on the most infamous murder case in the history of New Jersey. It begins in 1971. There were two John Lists. The John List who looked to heaven and saw how things ought to be, and the John List who looked around him and saw how things really were. John List took his three children to church every Sunday, the highest member of the Missouri Synod, the most conservative branch of the Lutheran Church. He taught Sunday school. Police believe John List was a man at war with his times, a man displeased by the permissiveness of the 70s and a man who had begun to fear for his family's moral safety. List was a successful accountant. These photos show how List appeared around 1970. Naturally, List has aged quite a bit. Forensic sculptor Frank Bender has constructed this bust based on List's cranial structure. If you know anything about John List, call 1-800-CRIME-89. It's a free and confidential call. List is described as a quiet, soft-spoken man, the kind who wears a shirt and tie. Hello. After that man on your John program List tonight. Was found at Kenny John List. In New York. His wife and I write to each other all the time. The He's in Richmond, Virginia. I have the exact address. Janet, there's an emergency. I got a terrible phone call this morning. Eleanor's mother is uh, gravely ill. I probably won't be able to spend the day. Oh, I'm sorry. Poor thing. If Eleanor calls, please don't tell her about her mother. I haven't had a chance to talk to her yet. Thank you. Help you? We're with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Does Robert Clark work here? Yes, he's in the back running off copies. I'll get him. As a matter of fact, there he is. Stand there, sir. We're with the FBI. Are you John List? Yes, I am. Please stay where you are. Come with us, please. What did he do? They got him, Chief. What? John List, Richmond, Virginia. We got him. Congratulations, Bob.
Are you John List? Yes. You're lying. No, I'm John. Why would I lie about something like that? To hurt me. I don't know. Well, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> I've got nothing left. What am I going to do? I want to know if you love me. I've got to know that. Yes, Eleanor. I do love you. Did you love her? Eleanor. If things had gotten worse for us, what would you have done? I slept next to you. We've made love. We've prayed <laughs> together. <sighs> but all I can think about is, <laughs> would you have killed me too? No. No. I'm not that man anymore. Aren't you? Thank you both for coming. I'm sure it was a difficult decision. I want you to know how sorry, how terribly sorry I am for hurting you. Helen was in excruciating pain. She was suffering terribly, rapidly deteriorating. The children weren't, John. For all these years, John, I've... I've wanted to know... To, to, to understand... how in God's name you could do this to the children. You see, Patty... was already in the hands of... of evil. Of the devil. She wanted to be an actress. She was... She was with children that were using drugs and alcohol. A lot of kids did that in the 70s, John. The boys, my sons, they were still innocent. They were God's children. And so I sent them to heaven. We would have taken them in. If there was no, no house, no money, no food, we'd have taken you all in. All you had to do was ask. The uh, court has appointed a forensic psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Rosen, to interview you. He has orders to place you under hypnosis if necessary. Do I have to do that? John, you're claiming you can't remember the actual murders. I can't. Sometimes I see flashes, but not of what really happened. Well, let's assume that to be true. If it is, then the court has every right to request a psychiatric study. We're also going to plead insanity based on twisted religious beliefs. Twisted, John. That's our defense. Our only defense.
Are you comfortable, John? Hmm? Yeah, yes. Now, let's pick it up where we left off yesterday. Why don't you tell me about that uh, last year? Uh, well, I couldn't do very well at a job. I was unemployed. Matter of fact, I hadn't worked in six months. I couldn't tell my family that I'd been fired. That would be too much for them to handle, so I tried to keep order. Every morning, I saw to the children's breakfast and that their lunches were packed and that they were dressed properly. And when I left the house, I went to the ferry landing. And I dig my way through the one ads looking for something, anything. At the end of the day, I'd go home and prepare dinner, do the dishes, do the wash, see that the children had their proper clothes for the next morning, and then with them still thinking I was going off to work, I'd leave in the morning, go back to the ferry landing, get the paper and do the same thing all over again. And you did that for six months? Yes. You never found work? No. I didn't. I was, I was borrowing money from my mother. When we'd go over the books, I'd already altered the ledgers. Helen was getting worse. It didn't seem to be any way for her to get better. I was praying for something, anything to happen that would give me the income to support my family. I had enough money for two more weeks. And then there would be nothing. Don't you see? There would be nothing. And I thought, if I left, what would happen to my mother? She was getting old. She didn't have enough income. I'd, I'd taken all of her investments. Helen couldn't even take care of herself. I didn't want my children to go off to some foster home. I didn't know what kind of person might end up raising them. You see, nothing was turning out the way it was supposed to, nothing. Man is certainly not meant to live in chaos. I thought, well, if Helen was the problem and I shot her, I would still have my mother, her children, you see, there was no income. There was no solution. Finally, I just decided there was no other way. I thought, if I murdered them all, my family would all go to heaven. And at least later on, I would have a chance to go to heaven. However, if I committed suicide, it would be 100% automatic that I would go to hell. Reverend Barber, how would you explain a Christian man of any faith being able to kill his own family. The fact is that John List did not trust God. He suffered a twisted sense of Christianity. He understood the dogma, but not the faith. John Emil List, you've been found guilty of five counts of murder in the first degree. Is there anything you wish to say before sentencing? I wish to inform the court that uh, I remain truly sorry for the tragedy which happened in 1971. I'd like to apologize. 
good or evil. And the day I was born, that's the way it always was, good or evil. I'm sorry. The defendant's acts stand as a permanent, profane, and pathetic example of the potential of man's inhumanity to man. John Emile List, you decided to play God. You decided to be jury, judge, and executioner. For the murder of Alma List, this court sentences you to life in prison. For the murder of your wife, Helen List, this court sentences you to life in prison. Stay tuned, because up next on True Movies 1, a holiday to remember. Alternatively, on True Movies 2, Woman Called Golda. And on True Entertainment, Desperate Journey, the Alison Wilcox story.